What's up everybody, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So last year, um, me and John went out elk hunting. It was our first time doing it and we learned a ton. We had a blast. Um, but before I put away all of my elk hunting gear last year, I decided to make a video and talk about all the things that I learned about the kinds of gear that you're gonna need if you wanna go do an elk hunting trip. So this video is gonna be really long. It's like two hours, but I have broken it up into different chapters so you can go down in the description and click on the topics that you're interested in but it pretty much covers everything from start to finish all the gear that you would need basically everything that we took with us to colorado when we went elk hunting uh, so hopefully you guys will find this one helpful make sure you are subscribed and uh, if you find any of this helpful make sure you like this video and uh, while you're at it maybe go check out some of our other media like our podcast it's pretty cool uh, check out some of our camo on our website swamp and stomp llc.com or uh, just go check out another one of our videos anyway let's get right into it Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. All right, so this right here is my pack that I carried up the mountain, but uh, I don't wanna talk about that right off the bat because there's a couple other things that you should think about if you're thinking about going elk hunting for your first time. Um, and that is that you're not gonna spend every single day on the mountain. There's likely gonna be days in between where you come down, you need to rest up, and you've got your base camp set up. So you want your base camp to be nice and comfortable. You wanna have all the necessary amenities, but you also don't wanna carry everything with you uh, and just have a ton of crap. So I'm gonna talk about how we set ours up. Maybe you guys can uh, do something similar. Important things for us was that we were gonna have a source of water. So we, we set up right on a stream. It was a spring fed stream, it was flowing really good. So we had plenty of water. Um, this was important because we wanted to make sure that we had a shower. So we had a little shower tent and we had one of those instant hot water heater things, uh, which was pretty sweet until it broke, um, but even then it still worked and being able to take a warm shower, especially at nighttime when it gets pretty cold, uh, it was really clutch. So um, if you don't want to spend the money on one of those instant water heaters, um, there's other ways to go about it. You can just uh, get a regular old um, little shower head pump situation that you can just pump right out of a bucket, but they're like 25, 30 bucks for the ones that are not heated. Um, and you can just, you know, get some water and then take some water, put it in a pot, boil it, and mix it in there so you got, you know, some relatively warm water. And honestly, like, you don't even need the water to be hot to get a good shower out of it. It's still incredibly comfortable if that water is just, like, lukewarm. Um, so that's definitely an option if you guys want to save a little bit of money there. Um, as far as our sleeping situation went at camp, um, I had a big, like, double blow-up mattress. This is just like one of those simple Intex um, twin size mattresses from Walmart, but it's like the thick kind, so it's like you're you know you're almost two feet off the ground. And I don't know why that matters, but it just makes it so much more comfortable for me when I'm up high off the ground like that. Me and John each had one of these set up in our tent, and the tent is is really important. I, I really suggest you get a nice big tent, preferably one that has a vestibule. Um, so that you can keep all your gear and all the dirty stuff in the vestibule um, and you keep all your clothes and everything inside of it nice and clean. Uh, another important thing about it being a big tent is that when you're not there, when you go up that mountain, if there's any rain that comes through, you want to be able to pull all your gear away from the walls so that your gear doesn't get wet because let's be real, a tent doesn't actually keep water out. It just keeps the water on the walls um, and it will seep through so if anything's touching the walls it's going to get wet 
we started out with a tent that I already had. Um, the problem with it was it was a wall tent, and wall tents, as comfortable as they are to walk around in, they catch a crap load of wind. And eventually we had a pretty strong windstorm come through and my tent did not survive. So we went to Walmart, I upgraded, and we got this freaking badass tent from Walmart and uh, it was even better than the original. So uh, make sure that you have a big tent. That's, that's number one if you're gonna be comfortable at base camp because you're gonna have a lot of gear stored in that tent for when you're going up the mountain because you're trying to take as little as possible. So get yourself a good mattress. And then the other thing is a good sleeping bag. Now this sleeping bag here, oh, and I just wanted to point out that I'm not, we are not sponsored by any of the companies that I'm gonna be talking about today. Literally none of them. Um, we'd welcome sponsorship though, if you guys want to uh, hit us up, uh, especially one of them, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But, um, so this is a climate, somewhere on here it says it, it's a climate, uh, Wild Aspen Zero. When I first bought this sleeping bag, it was like it was like one of the first things I bought for this trip. And I was thinking, like, sleep is the most important thing. I want to make sure that I'm rested every night. So I'm, if I'm going to carry any extra weight up the mountain, it's going to be in my sleep system. So I bought this sleeping bag, and it was cheap. I got it like uh, I got it on SierraTradingPost.com. If you guys aren't familiar with that, it's like a like an outlet for outdoor gear. Um, and it was like almost 50% off. So I think I paid like $60 for this. It's normally only $100. So it's a pretty cheap sleeping bag. The problem is, and I didn't realize this when I bought it because I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. It's a synthetic down type material. And as much as this will keep you warm, it does not compress and it weighs a lot. So, and I got the extra large version. It's got some extra width in it because I'm a big guy. Um, it's also longer if you're a tall person, but uh, when I put this in my pack, and I'll show you guys this later, when I, even when I had the compression sack on it, when I put it in my pack, it took up a huge part of my pack. And this sleeping bag weighs like four and a half pounds, which is stupid heavy. So I ended up replacing it with a much lighter, smaller bag that is in my pack. Um, and I didn't even think about it at the time. I was planning to just like use the same sleeping bag both at base camp and on the mountain. But I advise against that. I advise you get yourself a cheap synthetic sleeping bag for base camp. Um, this thing is super duper comfortable. I was like sleeping so good in it when I was at base camp. Um, and just having having the ability to leave everything in my pack while I was up the mountain was really clutch because I didn't have to like worry about did I pack everything when we were heading back up the mountain I just had two separate sets of sleeping gear which was awesome all right so this is my base camp box and I have not cleaned it up so it is currently a complete mess but uh, this basically had everything in it that I wanted to have at base camp so in my my uh, base camp bag i just have i have medication um and extra uh camp meals um also i have a power strip uh one of the things that we brought along which if you have it available to you is not a bad idea uh, is a generator we had uh, a little honda 1000 that i have the thing weighs absolutely nothing um it's super reliable you know it doesn't generate a ton of energy but it's enough to like charge everything um, you know or run the pump on your blow up mattress stuff like that uh, in hindsight I realized I probably could have just taken my solar generator this is a, a Jackery 500 um, super sweet uh, 500 watt hour uh, battery pack it's got USB plugs it's got uh, AC outlet DC outlet um, and you can hook it up to a solar panel which I also have for it so in hindsight, that might have been a better option because really we were only using the generator just to like power random crap. Um, the only thing that this probably would get eaten up on was uh, a light system. So when we were cooking and stuff and we wanted extra light at the camp, uh, I basically have like a string of lights that I put a bunch of like 100 watt LEDs in and you could basically see our campsite from outer space with that thing. It's really clutch. Um, I think if you ran that on here for a few hours, this thing would probably be dead. Uh, so, 
maybe come up with a better light system that doesn't use as much power. But I definitely think one of these is an option and you don't have to listen to a generator running at night. Um, so if you have one of these, maybe consider that. If you don't have any of these options and you want to have some sort of power source so you can charge all of your stuff, um, if you go to Harbor Freight, they have this little generator. I, I think they still have it anyway. It's called a tailgater. It's a two-stroke, like, I want to say it's like a thousand watt two-stroke. It's kind of loud, but if you like point it, like run a long uh, extension cord and point it away from you, it's not that bad, but it's super cheap. I want to say it's like 120 bucks and it'll do everything that you need. So uh, that's definitely an option if you, you want to have a power source um, at your camp. So anyway, other than that, in here I've got, um, I, I kept extra set of baby wipes. These are obviously important um, because it's basically how you're showering half the time when you're up on the mountain. It's how you're, uh, you know, wiping your butt and uh, just keeping clean in general. So those are a good thing to, uh, to have with you. I took like five packs of them. I think I ended up using like two or three. Um, and these are my favorites in case anybody gives a crap. <laughs> Get it? Um, Huggies Natural Care. Um, they don't have any like alcohol on them. They don't have any lotion on them. I hate the ones with lotion because when you use them, it like leaves a residue behind and everything's all squishy and gross down there when you're hiking. Um, these are, it says it on there, it's like, it's like 99% water. So they're just literally wet wipes. And uh, they're sensitive, fragrance free. So there's no funky smells that might tip off your, uh, your deer or your elk. Um, and they're plant-based, so they're biodegradable. Um, so you can get those at Walmart, they're like a dollar a package. Um, what else do I got in here? Um, I had a bunch of rolls of Luca tape. Um, I bought three rolls of this stuff. It came in handy a few times. Uh, sometimes if you start feeling like a hot spot on your foot when you're hiking, um, I keep one of these in my pack always, but I had some extras in here. You can tape up your foot, prevent yourself from getting a blister. Um, this is something that I did that I don't know if other people would be interested in doing, but uh, I just wanted to uh, be at my best. So I had some supplements that I brought with me. Um, creatine. So creatine is a supplement that a lot of like weightlifters use. Um, and basically what it does is it allows your muscles to hold more water. Um, and your muscles need water uh, to be able to, to perform and maintain performance. So if you start taking this before you go and continue to take it throughout, uh, you're likely to have more stamina out of your muscles um, and they won't fatigue as easily. So creatine monohydrate, I bought this on Amazon. It's like a 500 pill bottle. I don't know how much it costs. It was like 30 bucks or something like that. It'll last me forever. Um, and then also BCAAs, these are branched chain amino acids. Um, this helps uh, with muscle recovery. So if you take these at night after hiking a bunch, your legs are super sore, it's gonna help those muscles recover and you're not gonna be as sore the next day, which means you're gonna be ready to get back out there sooner. So um, I took those every single night and I, you know when I work out at the gym and stuff, it helps a lot. Um, chapstick, make sure you bring a lot of chapstick. Uh, your lips are going to get dry out there and it's something that us Floridians forget about. So make sure you get a bunch of that. Um, one thing I did not have any problems with was ticks. I brought a bunch of uh, Sawyer's tick stuff. I, I had put it on my clothes uh, before I left, but frankly, uh, it, there, there's, I, I don't know why, but there's just like no ticks out there. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and then one of the last things that I'm likely to find in here, yeah, here's this. And somewhere in here, there's another bottle of pills. Actually, there's another one somewhere. Um, you want to take whatever medication you're going to need while you're out there. There it is. Um, for me personally, I don't sleep well. I sleep really lightly. Um, and sleep's like one of the most important things you can do out there. So uh, I had Advil PM. I took it almost every night because uh, it helps with inflammation. Your muscles are all swollen um, and it puts you to sleep. So especially when I was up on the mountain, I would use Advil PM a lot if I was really tired. Or Benadryl um, will knock you the F out as well. 
Um, for me, Benadryl works even better than the Advil PM, but the Advil PM had the extra benefit of like um, reducing inflammation on your muscles, so you wake up feeling a little bit better. Uh, Benadryl is also not a bad thing to have uh, out there in case you run into something you are allergic to or you get stung by something. I got attacked by wasps um, pretty severely. I had to take Benadryl. I'm not even allergic to wasps, but there were so many stings that I just took it um, just, just to be safe. Um, and then the last thing I have here, uh, these are baby aspirin. Um, I bought a crap load of these on, um, on Amazon. Uh, so baby aspirin is like a low dosage aspirin. It's only 81 milligrams or I think a normal dosage is like 350. Um, there's been a lot of studies that have shown that uh, taking aspirin can help reduce the chances of um, altitude sickness. So uh, I, I would suggest you read the studies because I don't want you to take my word for it. Uh, but what I read was basically you start taking it three times a day, you know, like every four or five, six hours. Um, for a couple of days before you start going up and then for like three days after you start your ascent and this is just for your initial ascent because once you've been even at base camp at 8500 feet for a while you will start to uh, build up more red blood cells so that you can carry more oxygen in your blood but in the beginning this will help with altitude sickness um, the only uh, the only disclaimer that I did find in those studies that is that while you're taking this and while you're adjusting to the altitude, do not use any sleep aids. So Benadryl or uh, Advil PM was a no-no, which kind of sucked for the first couple days because I didn't sleep very well. But I did that so that I wouldn't get altitude sickness. One last thing. Vitamin C. I like these emergency packets. Um, you can get other stuff um, for electrolytes. I basically drank one of these every morning, whether I was on the mountain or not. Um, it's got a bunch of electrolytes. It's got a bunch of vitamins in there. Um, it's going to help you hydrate better. It's going to keep you healthy. Um, that was super smooth. Um, it's it's a good idea. So you can buy these at like Publix or uh, any grocery store for like ten dollars for like a crap load of these. And there's thirty of them in here. Uh, it will be more than enough. Or you can spend a crap load of money on things like um, Mountain Ops or whatever. They have you know electrolytes and stuff like that too. You can do that if you want. Anyway, let's talk about food. Uh, so I got a discount on this brand, Backpackers Pantry. I found a coupon, they were like 30% off. Um, the meals sounded nice, so I was like, screw it, I'm gonna buy these. So I bought a crap load of them, um, and I can say a couple good things about them, but mostly like I was pretty unimpressed. Well, I just, let, me, let me be more specific about that. I also got um, uh, Mountain House. Uh, Mountain House is a pretty well-known brand, uh, makes these meals. Uh, I only bought two meals from Mountain House that I knew from previous experience were really good uh, from a time when I uh, was living off these things for like a week straight uh, or longer even. Um, so, but anyway, the, the Backpackers Pantry, I got them because I had this coupon and I was like, oh, I'm gonna save some money. But in hindsight, I actually realized that what I ended up getting these for, um, like, first of all, wasn't, like, per meal, wasn't really a whole lot cheaper than you could buy Mountain House in bulk packages on Amazon for. Like, you can get six packs of Mountain House, and they end up being approximately, like, seven bucks a meal. These were approximately six and a half bucks a meal, but the thing I was really disappointed by is some of these come in a two serving package like you can see right here this is a fettuccine alfredo with chicken um and it's total bs you got to eat both servings calories is the name of the game when you're up on that mountain you're burning a crap ton of calories so you want to eat a lot of calories and a lot of times you'll actually find yourself like full but you just stuff yourself anyway um so when they're two servings they have a good amount of calories. Like they'll be close to 600. Like this one's 580. There's another one in here that's like lasagna or something. Uh, that's 620. Um, so that's a good amount for the meals that you want to be eating. 
But they also have some other ones that are like much smaller. That's another lasagna. Like here, this thing. Mashed potatoes and gravy with beef. Two servings. And it's only 180 calories a serving. So it's 360 calories in this pack. That is not enough. Um, and I found there was quite a few of their meals that were really light. Uh, so I was a little unimpressed by that. So Backpackers Pantry, if you're paying attention, do something about it. I don't know. Uh, either make some like extra sized versions of some of these meals or figure out a way to add some more calories because we really need them when we're up there. Uh, you know, I think for the most part, these guys are catering to just more people that are backpacking just like going for a pleasure stroll like when we're hunting we're climbing up some ridiculous stuff we're burning a ton of calories we need more than 360 calories um, that said there was a few of their meals that were really delicious so let me just give them props on those if i can find them oh this one was so good stroganoff sauce mushrooms and beef this thing was delicious it was nice and salty um, i found a lot of their meals were not as salty as i would like um, keep in mind that you know when you're up there, salt, um, salt will make you retain water and make you bloated, whatever. But when you're actually using a lot of water, that extra salt's going to help you um, hold more water. It's going to keep you more hydrated. So uh, I want it to be relatively salty. And um, but anyway, it was this was delicious. Uh, the only problem that I had with this one, and really with most of their meals, is. And this this isn't just a backpacker's pantry thing. This is just dehydrated meals in general. Um, they take a long time to rehydrate. Um, and in fact, backpacker's pantry actually has a line on there which other companies don't have. And it says rehydration time doubles every 5,000 feet above um, sea level. And the directions on them are made for 5,000 feet of elevation. So when we were at 8,000 to 11,500 feet, we actually needed to wait twice as long to let these things rehydrate. So, um, you know, like this one's like seal pouch and wait eight minutes and then stir it again and then wait another seven minutes. So it's really 16 and 14. So this is, this is a half hour rehydration. Well, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't have a half hour. I, I Most of the time when I was hungry, I was hungry. So what we end up doing a lot of times, I don't know if I have a package right now, but buy yourself some, uh, some of that Idahoan instant potatoes uh, I suggest getting the four cheese one and maybe just the garlic one or the butter one. Um, just because the four cheese one is, is nice to add to things that would benefit from cheese. And then there's things, uh, then the other one you can add to other stuff. But basically, so when, when I would rehydrate them and the meat was kind of soft already and like everything was pretty close to what I wanted it to be as far as hydration goes. Uh, there would usually be a lot of water left over, so I'd just pour in some of that potato stuff. Um, it would soak up all the water, and on top of that, uh, it would add calories. So for this particular one, the stroganoff one, like I, it says make a, a cup and a quarter of boiling water. I would do a cup and a half, and then I would fill up the rest of it with potatoes. And then, you know, by the time I did that, we're looking at, you know, like a 500 calorie meal. Um, so generally speaking, you also want to eat smaller meals at dinner and bigger meals for breakfast and lunch. So I usually saved these uh, these smaller meals for dinner. Uh, but anyway, so that one was really good. Uh, the fettuccine Alfredo was pretty good too. It also needed some potatoes to soak up some of that moisture. The four cheese one goes really good with that. The lasagna was really good. Again, it needed some cheesy potatoes to help soak up moisture. It was pretty much all of them needed that. Uh, one of them was absolutely terrible. So uh, if this company is listening, fix it. Uh, wait, before I get to the terrible one, the Santa Fe rice and beans with chicken was actually really good. I only ate it once though, because uh, it was a little bit spicy. I mean, it should be because it's got chilies in it, but the last thing I want to deal with when I'm up on a mountain is like fire poop. Um, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your butthole gets all raw. It's terrible. Um, so I didn't really eat it as much as I would have liked. It was really good though. Uh, this one was freaking terrible. The peanut butter and banana oatmeal. Now this, the flavor of this was good. 
the problem was y'all made me put way too much freaking water in there a cup of water in here it was like eating peanut butter and cinnamon flavored oatmeal soup it was gross and you're not going to add potatoes to oatmeal so we were basically screwed we just had to deal with it um, so maybe if you want you can carry some dry oats with you so that you can top that off because other than that the flavor was there um, but uh, it was super soupy so if you're going to buy that one just make sure that you uh, are prepared for that and one of my favorites which I don't even think I have any left I think I ate them all um, was uh, the granola the milk and granolas with bananas or something like that that thing was awesome it's like 620 calories you don't need to boil water for it it's delicious i think next year i'm just gonna buy that granola um, some breakfast scrambles this is just like eggs and stuff but frankly um, the mountain house breakfast skillet is better than this so i'm probably not gonna buy any more of these uh, but that that backpackers pantry granola was awesome um, and that stroganoff was awesome. So I don't think I'm gonna be buying any more Backpackers Pantry because I still have quite a lot left. A couple other meals that were freaking delicious. The Mountain House Chili Mac uh, is awesome. Um, like I said, the breakfast skillet is awesome. And another one that's awesome that I don't have any left of because I ate them all uh, is the biscuits and gravy. That's a really good breakfast. So next year, I think I'm just gonna stick to the meals that I know are really good. Um, and that pretty much sums up food. Oh wait, no, never mind. Snacks, snacks. Okay, I got a pack of Nutter Butters here. Um, I also had several packs of Oreos, other Nutter Butters. Um, buy yourself like the snack size, like the party size, candy bars, like Snickers, Twix, all that stuff. I had a big tub of uh, Red Vines, whatever snacks you like. Think candy, high calories. Um, you're gonna want to be snacking while you're hiking a lot. Um, you don't always have time to like stop and pull out your cooking kit and make a full meal. So you want to have snacks that are just like readily available that you can just snack on all the time. And I suggest you keep a ton of them in here uh, so that you can replenish your pack whenever you're going up the mountain so that you have lots of calories that you can just snack on real quick. So that pretty much sums up base camp. All right, here we go. This is my pack, and first I'm gonna empty it, and then I'm gonna repack it all so I can show you guys first how the pack system works, and then I'll show you what I keep it in and how I pack it. And there's a lot going on here because um, I'm slightly obsessed with backpacks. So when I put this pack together, I did a lot of research, um, and I kind of have this obsession with modularity. I like having packs that can function in different settings. Um, and so uh, that was real important for me with this pack. And, and this is actually like probably the thing that I kind of splurged the most on during buying gear, uh, be, just because I, I'm kind of obsessed with packs. Um, so what I did is I used the uh, A1 mainframe and I'm just gonna take this apart real quick so you guys can see it. Um, because there's multiple components to it. And this is one of the really, uh, sorry, I said A1, F1, F1 mainframe. The, um, the Everly Stock F1 mainframe has been around for a really long time and it's really popular. Um, and it's because it is so customizable, you can do so many different things with it. Um, so, let me show you what I did. So, uh, the part that I just took off is called uh, the vapor pack um, and it's just a modular pack that you can attach to the system. Um, it's the 2500 and I'll, I'll show you more about that in a second. Uh, but this frame that you see here that has this load shelf on the bottom, it's got a, uh, a rigid frame going up the top here um, and it has your uh, strap system. Hold on, this is in the way. It's got your strap system attached to it. So it's basically the part that makes the whole thing a pack. Now this strap system and this padding system is awesome. Um, there's really uh, like thick padding that sticks out a long ways. You can see it's like probably an inch and a half thick. Um, and it creates these channels for air to flow around. It's got this big thick pack that's gonna rest on your lower back. Um, you know, lots of padding here on the cummerbund. 
uh, which is great because the cummerbund is really going to take the majority of the weight. The, the straps themselves have lots of padding as well. There's all kinds of straps everywhere to make your adjustments. Um, and so, the, you know, this F1 mainframe pack is super popular. Um, now, in itself, you can use the F1 mainframe to go in a lot of different directions. Personally, uh, this is just the build that I wanted to do, um, and I really like it a lot, so I'm gonna show you uh, how I went about it. Uh, so basically, uh, they have these packs here on the side. These are, uh, you can just zip them off, and they come right off of the mainframe. Um, and they're just like these sort of almost cylindrical uh, packs. They call them the bat wings. I've got two of them. There's another one right here. Um, and so what you can do, if you wanted to run this as a day pack, you could zip these two together like so. And now they're stuck together and that's, you could run this as a pack just like that. They're like 600 cubic inches each. Um, there's like a little, you know, extra storage pouch here. There's some molly loops here you can clip stuff off to. Um, inside of it, there is um, a hydration sleeve in there. So you can put your hydration pack in there. I've got a two liter. A two liter fits in there really well. So if you wanted to, you could run a two liter in each one. You got four liters. Um, I'll, I'll show you and I'll end up showing you how I did my water system later on, but um, they each have a spot where you can run a hose through for a hydration system. Uh, so you can have one coming down each shoulder, you can run them both down the same shoulder, it doesn't matter. Uh, but these are just great. There's a rock in there. Uh, they just have a lot of uh, a lot of options there. It seems like it'd be pretty small, but there's actually a lot of really usable space in there, and I'll show you how I ended up using all of that space in these bat wings. Um, so, so that's if you want to run it as a day pack. Now if you want to run it as, uh, so if you are just running it as a day pack, like there's your load shelf right there. So if you killed something, you can put your quarters, your meat right on here. You've got a load shelf here to take the weight. Um, and there's a bunch of straps that come with the F1 mainframe. These straps right here, these are your compression straps. Um, they attach, let's see if you guys can see that. They attach right here straight to the mainframe. So you can clip in, you go all the way, you can either go all the way around the main or around the bat wings to clip to the other side and pull those bat wings in tight. Or if you wanted to run it so that your bat wings are further, like more centered so they don't stick out on the sides, you've got these strap, these molly loops right here. Um, you can unzip the bat wing and then basically clip in, run the strap through these loops, run them through the other side, and then you can basically slide those um, those bat wings to whatever position you want them to be uh, when you've got meat on your pack. This is a great option because uh, there are other packs out there that do have a load shelf, but they don't allow you to pack the meat right onto your back. And you want it to be as close to your back as possible because it's going to make it easier to carry. It's going it, to keeping that weight tight against you is is really important. And you're carrying like at that point you're carrying like a hundred pounds, so you want to. You want to really make it as easy on yourself as possible. And that's part of the reason that I wanted the, uh, the rigid frame. There are other options. There are uh, options that have a less rigid frame that have like a molly, like a strap, like a webbing load shelf that folds down and it has a similar thing, but they, they're just, that rigid frame really makes, uh, makes it a lot better when you're carrying heavy weight. Now, some people might argue that you're, pretty rarely carrying heavy weight. Most of the time you're not carrying heavy weight. So uh, they don't want to emphasize that. Personally, I feel like uh, the pack's not that bad to carry when you're not carrying heavy weight. So I'd rather have it built to carry that heavy weight uh, when the time comes. So um, anyway, so if you <clears throat> want to run bat wings as is, that's cool. Uh, this right here, this is the, uh, the vapor pack. Um, and right here, we've got the butt bucket. This is attached uh, to it, which uh, just because that's the way I set it up. So this isn't normally attached to it. It's just uh, the way I like it. And I'll show you why um, I do it like that. Um, but so the vapor pack is a super lightweight pack as the name implies. Um, and you can run the vapor pack like 
by itself. Uh, this is the 2500, so this is the smallest version of the Vapor Pack, and I got that for a reason, because I already had those bat wings. But if you want to go with a more traditional style pack, because personally I made this very compartmentalized, I like having my gear sort of separated out, and I'll explain that when I start showing you where all my gear goes. Um, I like having a place for everything, and having all these different compartments allows me to do that. Now, a more traditional and lighter weight option would be to just basically use a pack like the Vapor Pack, and they make a 5,000 and they make a 7,000. Um, if you're gonna just go that route, I would probably get the 7,000 and it would be significantly cheaper uh, than the way that I went about this. So if you wanna save a little bit of money, uh, the Vapor Pack is a really lightweight option. Get the 7,000 and forget about the bat wings and all that crap and just run the 7,000. It's huge, you can fit everything in there. Uh, you just don't get any compartmentalization. That's what the other guys did that I was with um, and they were perfectly happy with it. Um, personally, it's not my style. Uh, if you do end up going that way, you want to use some divider bags or like organizer bags. This one actually came with the vapor pack um, and it has like a little molly clip. And if you open up the vapor pack, there's actually little molly loops all over the place with little clips on the inside here. And I'll try and remember to show you guys that. But um, you can hang hydration packs on either side. There's a hydration pouch uh, divider and there's the little slit right there that you can run your hose through um, but these uh, little divider packs are are great I guess if you don't have compartmentalization in your pack you can keep your stuff sort of separated out the reason that I wanted to have this vapor pack separate and, and have it be this smaller version with the bat wings I recognize that it makes my pack a little bit heavier because I've got more material uh, but there's a reason that I wanted that. So basically the way that I attached it, so the vapor pack, you can attach it by either zipping it straight to the, um, the frame, uh, the way that I have the bat wing zipped on. Uh, that's what you would do if you were just running the vapor pack. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, the vapor pack also has these pockets on the side. You can put like water bottles, sticks, or whatever the hell you want in there. Um, but the way I rigged it up, they were basically useless. Um, but anyway, um, so you can zip it straight on there, but what I did in this case, and I don't know if this was really the intent, but I just, it has these like cinch straps that like allow you to tighten up the vapor pack to like get everything nice and compressed. I just ran those through these uh, strap loops on the bat wings, clipped those together, and did that on all of them. All right, there we go. So that's attached to the bat wings now. So there's a lot of usable space here, um, and I'm going to show you guys how I pack that up. Now, if I if I did end up shooting uh, a bull or something, and I wanted to load meat in here, you can get behind the vapor pack right there, and you can put your meat in there, and you can use it just the same way that you normally would. It's just your pack's going to be sticking out a little bit further. Um, so then another part, another component that I added was this. I don't know, I'll have to look it up. This, But this is like a, a top pack, um, and Everly Stock is really big on like multi-functionality. Uh, this pack actually, if you open, there's some Velcro right here, if you open that up, there's some bigger straps in here, you can pull these out, you can see them right there. And this whole thing actually turns into a fanny pack, if you wanted to run it as a fanny pack. Um, it has a hydration chamber in there. You can see the hoses coming out the corner right here. I have a three liter inside of here um, that stays in permanently. I never take it out when I want to fill it, which is a good thing because it was kind of a pain in the butt to fill uh, or to take out. I like the, there's a zipper on the side here you can get into. You can, I don't know if you guys can see that there, but that's how you put it in there. It was kind of a pain to get it in there. It's kind of a tight fit, so I never want to have to take that out. So it's a good thing that I have a quick disconnect to um, to be able to fill uh, that particular hydration pouch. Um, you see there's some carabiners on my pack. They are uh, very strategically placed, and I'll explain that when I show you how I pack everything up. Um, but I kind of like ghetto rig this up. Uh, I actually got their like harness. They have like some strap harness for attaching a uh, bino pack. And uh, I bought that and I used it kind of in a weird way. Uh, first I, I attached this um, 
top pack uh, to the top of the frame here so that it would basically be like the cover that goes on top um, sits right on top it's easy access it has lots of pockets so there's like a main pocket up at the top here i kept all kinds of snacks and all kinds of stuff in here i'll show you what i kept in there in a little while but it's really big it's got lots of space uh, so you can keep all kinds of junk in there um, and it's quick easy access um, and it also has a smaller pocket on the front right here and i had a few items in there you keep like your keys and stuff in there um, so lots of quick access usable space uh, big fan of that um, other component I added, I mentioned this before, this is the butt bucket system. Um, and it, it goes with this quick release strap right here. Um, and in fact, I'll have to give you guys a better demonstration of how it works. But basically, um, the butt bucket is attached to the bottom of the vapor pack here. And, uh, and then I would run it through and actually clip it right here on the load shelf so that it sort of created like a compartment right here. There's like an empty space there and that is instrumental because that's actually where I tuck my tent in. Um, so, uh, so it kind of secures the tent in there, but also the whole point of the butt bucket is a way to carry your bow um, and it allows for a quick release uh, way of carrying that bow. So I'll show you guys once the pack is put back together, I'll show you how uh, that quick release works so that you understand the butt bucket. Um, finally over here I've got these two little clip things that uh, were actually also part of that uh, bino harness situation and if anybody from Everly Stock watches this like maybe you guys can come up with a better way uh, that's like already put together for me to attach this um, whatever the heck it's called uh, this multi-pack thing that goes on top um, and uh, um, and to attach it with the straps that come with it. So basically there's like these straps that came uh, with this particular pack. And uh, the way I guess that it was supposed to work was like, I would thread these through the molly here and then come around the backside, attach it to something and then clip them to itself so that this is self-sustaining. It attaches itself. And, and I get, I just asked you guys if you can make something for that but it, it's a stupid system because um, when you do that this thing is just loose so when you're walking it's like bouncing up and down and stuff so what I really wanted was a way for me to uh, attach it and then strap it down so that's why I, I added these other straps on there to clip it on and then I ran these across the front of the pack and I clipped them onto here that way I could cinch that tight keep that top nice and tight on the pack so nothing's bouncing around and rolling around when I'm walking. Um, so it was kind of a, a little bit of a ghetto rig, but it worked out okay. The only thing I really did not like about it, uh, the design of this particular little pack, which I think is it's just a stupid, silly little design flaw that they can work on. Um, I think this attachment point at the top doesn't make any sense. It should all attach from right here on the bottom uh, because that will allow the bag to just hang and be its full uh, self. When it's set up like this, what ends up happening when you pull on the top, it squishes everything down. Um, and then when you when you have tension on it, when it's full and you go to open it up, it has a tendency to like want to push your crap out. So you got to be careful uh, when you're doing that. So if you guys can think of a better way to uh, attach this maybe like don't have the attachment on the top but put it on the bottom somewhere uh, that would have been clutch like if, even if you were just using these straps and there was a, the the female end of the clip was right here so you go through wrap around a clip so all the weight is hanging from the bottom side of this pouch I think that would have worked a lot, out a lot better I'm not complaining I still love the system uh, the pack worked out great but that would have just been one little improvement you guys could make so Everly Stock get your shit together all right, so on this side of the pack, what I've got going on, uh, I mentioned that I had the hydration system in that top pack with a quick release uh, system. This is a, uh, or a quick disconnect. This is a Sawyer quick disconnect on the hose. So I can unplug that. I can hook up my filter system straight to it. And I'll show you guys that when I talk about my filter system. Um, I wanted to show you guys this guy right here. I forget what this thing is called right now. I think it's called like the multi-pack or something like that. 
This thing is awesome. I was really happy that I got this thing, and I actually, I haven't emptied it. There's a bunch of stuff in here. But uh, basically, the two packs that I, you have on the side of your cummerbund, these are the things that you're gonna be able to access really quickly um, when you're walking around. So uh, I wanted to have this big one that has a lot of organization so that I could have things exactly where I wanted them. And then this other side, really simple, this is my snack pack. It probably still has a bunch of snacks in there, or mostly candy wrappers because I ate all my snacks. Uh, but I would just stuff this chock full of uh, candy bars and stuff so I could reach them real quick. And there's one last thing I want to show you if I can get this bag to stay standing. I don't think I can. So this is my bugle tube. I got the uh, born and raised one. If you guys don't watch the born and raised YouTube channel, uh, it's pretty awesome. They do like all public land, public land. It's all um, elk hunting and it's awesome. I learned a ton from these guys and uh, being a YouTuber myself, I feel like I should support YouTubers whenever I use their resources. Born and raised, super awesome. Go check them out. I'll try and put a link up there. Um, if any of you guys watch this, you guys rock. Uh, so I got their, their bugle tube and I also got their mouth calls and I'll talk about those mouth calls a little bit. There's a few that I really liked if you guys want to buy some. Uh, but anyway, when you're walking around, you want to have your bugle tube relatively handy. And what I would do is I would basically wrap this paracord around my neck. So it was hanging here. And I, I ended up finding that this little nook right there between my, uh, my bat wing and this uh, little pouch would hold it perfectly right there. Um, and then if I wanted, I could just rip it right out the side, pull it off, and start bugling. So uh, that was just kind of a bonus that I discovered. Finally, the very last piece of this puzzle, my uh, bino harness. Uh, now this one's actually made by JX3. If you guys are interested in getting one, it comes as part of their um, the JX3 pack system. It's a freaking sweet pack system for saddle hunting. Um, you cannot buy this separately right now, but the whole pack system is awesome. It's what we use when we saddle hunt. Uh, the reason I, I wanted, well, first of all, I had this already, but also just the way this thing is designed is just super badass. It has a little uh, phone holder right here. You can rotate it however you want it. Uh, so, and it has a little screen protector. So you can put your phone right in there, flip that over it. Your phone's nice and protected. And it's exactly where you want it when this thing is hanging on your chest. You got hands free, your phone's right there. You can look at your map, you can do stuff. Uh, you you know put it on a speaker phone and talk or whatever. And when you close it up, it's all magnetic. And I like that it folds away from you instead of towards you because when it's towards you, you like flip it up and it's like hitting you in the face and it won't stay up. This one, I just rip it open. My binos are right there. There's a little uh, harness that holds the binos in place if, if I let go of them or drop them or whatever. Um, your phone's right there. There's a little thing here on the side. You can put your range finder in. There's a little retention strap on there, but I also added this little um, like expanding, I don't know what the hell you call these things, but I attached that to the range finder. And then there's a little pocket on the side here. There's some moly webbing you can clip stuff onto. In here, um, I just I kept my mouth calls, my reeds. Um, I also kept a standalone bino harness in case I like wanted to go super lightweight um, and just take my binos uh, and my range finder. I have like a, it's called a Rick Young bino harness, super lightweight. But um, and the reason I did that is because this bino harness would actually attach to my pack, which I'm not a huge fan of. I also have the rubber tips for my uh my trekking poles which I, I would keep in there um but yeah so let me show you how this attaches so this was just kind of something i made up on on the fly uh there was these straps that came with the jx3 it just has like little um, g hooks on it that you just hook on right there um and right there so that would make it hang out in front and then I also attached a couple of those on the bottom here so that when you lean forward, it wouldn't swing out away from you. Now, I did like this system. I liked having everything all as one pack. And actually, their camo kind of blended pretty well with the camo of the pack anyway. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is every time we'd stop to like take off our packs, I had to like undo these and then you basically like flip this over your head 
when when you want to take your pack off you just like flip it up and over and then you take your pack off and set it down and then, and then we'd get right back up again to go somewhere and everybody else had their bino harness like already attached to their chest they never took it off uh, so they'd be ready to start walking sooner than i was that was the only downside to it so maybe just get some friends that are more willing to wait but anyway uh, I may, so this does come with its own little harness that you can just wear it separately, but I didn't want to use it because I didn't want there to be more padding from the harness interfering with the padding of the backpack. That's why I went with it this way, but I might do that differently next year. But this pack is freaking sweet. So that sums up my pack. Um, I hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of different ways that you can go with a pack. This is just the way that I like to do it. I like to have everything compartmentalized. And if you want to understand how I compartmentalize it, where I put stuff, why this organization scheme worked so well for me, make sure you watch the next video in which I'm going to pack everything into my bag and show you how I carried it up the mountain. I'm gonna basically take everything that I already took out of my pack, I'm gonna put it back in my pack and I'm gonna explain what its purpose is, how much it costs, and um, why I carry it. So let's get into it. All right, so first, um, I'm gonna pack up this pouch that's on the side here and talk about what's in there. So um, as I mentioned in my pack video, uh, this pouch is just really useful because um, it has a lot of little compartments in it and I can uh, separate stuff out and keep things nice and organized. So. Um, one of the things I'll keep in here, which you guys don't need to worry about, is batteries, card readers, and stuff like that. Uh, that's more for the filming purpose. I think I've got everything out of it now. So one thing I was keeping in there, this is a 5 liter um, ultra lightweight uh, dry bag uh, that's made by Everly Stock. I just figured it was a good thing to have in case, um, you know, dealing with rain. I wanted to have something I could put my camera in if I wanted to keep it nice and dry. So I just stuffed that down in the bottom. I got some face paint because, you, you know, sometimes you just feel like painting your face. I don't know. Um, a couple lighters. I like carrying two of them in case one of them dies. Still got a backup. Two extra chapsticks. And I also carried a third one in my pocket. You guys do not understand how important chapstick is. So I'm tucking these in these little pockets that are on the inside here um, that allow me to kind of separate some stuff out. <clears throat> Tube of super glue. <clears throat> You never know when you break something, you want to, you know, super glue it together. Or uh, super glue is actually used by the military a lot uh, in the place of band-aids. If you cut yourself, you just put a little dab of super glue in there. You would think by the sound of it that it's going to hurt, but it actually does not hurt at all. Um, but it'll stop the bleeding pretty quickly. So super glue is a really important thing to have. I keep one in here and I also keep one with my first aid kit, which I keep in a different part of the pack. Um, and then I have two headlights. Uh, this one right here, this is a black diamond, uh, or I forget what it's called. It's like, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up. It's a, a 350 lumen. The really cool thing about this is it has a rechargeable lithium ion battery in it. So you can just plug it into a USB and recharge it and it lasts forever. Um, but you can also pull that lithium ion battery out of it and just use AAA batteries as backup. So if you, if you carry a couple extra uh, AAA batteries, um, then you're basically good to go. But I always had my battery pack somewhere around here um, that I was able to use to charge this up if I needed to. I also have this little tiny guy. This is a little backup. Um, I forget what it's called. It's also a black diamond. I'll, I'll look up what they're called in try and pop it up on the screen here um, but it, this is a really simple one it has regular light and I think it has a red light yeah it just has regular white light and a red light and that's it and I think it runs on two AAA batteries so this is just back up I keep that tucked inside of here in another one of these little compartments so I know exactly where it is when I need to find it and then my main one um, I keep in this, there's a little back pouch right here. I keep that in there because I can get it without having to touch any zippers. I don't have to use two hands. I just reach back, I grab it, and uh, I can use it, which is really handy when you're like making camp. You got to get to your, um, your light real quick. So I like having that. 
there's my battery pack. So here's my battery pack. I keep an extra iPhone charger because I run an iPhone. Uh, so I keep that in here. And the main reason I wanted to keep that in this pouch is because, um, you know, if you're walking around and you suddenly realize your phone's dying and you just want to hook it up and tuck your phone inside of here so you can still reach your phone while it's charging, that's the main reason that I wanted to have that right there. Um, but also, I, I didn't even mean for this, but when I would set up my tent and put my pack under the vestibule, this would actually sit right next to the opening into the vestibule so I could just like, I had a lot of important stuff in this little pouch, so I could just kind of reach in there uh, from laying in bed, I could grab chapstick. Um, I have my water hoses right next to it so I could drink. And I have my charge pack and all that stuff. So that was kind of accidental, but it ended up working out really nicely. Uh, like I said, I put my batteries in there. I'm not going to put them in there now because I'll take those over to another pack. Same thing goes with this and the rest of this stuff. I'm actually going to be just uh, putting it in storage and it's going to stay that way until next year. Um, what else we got? Wipes. These are mucho important. Um, sometimes, depending on how long I'm going to go, I'll take two packs. Uh, but I always had a pack in here uh, just in case. And then I would also stick uh, like a bag of cookies. I would get like Oreos or Nutter Butters in a little Ziploc bag. It's this bag right here, which is empty because I'm a fat ass. Um, and I would stuff those in there just so that I had uh, high calorie snacks that I could reach quickly and easily. And I think, oh, Vaseline, always tuck that in here. Uh, you never know when you get a little bit of chafage, you need to put a little bit of Vaseline somewhere between your legs, whatever. Um, also, Vaseline makes an excellent fire starter. If you take uh, some toilet paper um, or even just some like some uh, dry plant material and cover it in Vaseline and light that on fire, it burns for a really long time. Um, and so that can be a really good fire starter. Finally, a little bottle uh, of baby aspirin. So baby aspirin or just aspirin in general are used to combat altitude sickness. But um, I also just added a bunch of different pills in here. Uh, so I have regular Advil, I have Advil PM, I've got um, a Meprazole is, is something for uh, heartburn that I deal with quite a bit, especially if you're sleeping on uneven ground, sometimes you get heartburn from that. Um, and I got some Benadryl in there. So um, it's my little med kit in case I need some, some drugs up there. Keep them all in there. And the, all the pills are different colors, so it's easy to keep track of which ones are which. And apparently I was carrying these hand warmers in there. Um, actually, they're toe warmers and hand warmers. I didn't even realize they were in there. But uh, they really don't weigh that much. And, you know, to carry an extra pack of them, just it's not a terrible idea because you could find yourself in a situation where you really need a little extra warmth. So I don't mind carrying just a couple extra ounces for that reason. Um, and then on the outside here, there's another little pocket, um, Tums for heartburn again. And there's my hunting license. Um, I just keep that in there at all times. So can't forget it. And then in this front little pouch, I've got my wind checker. Um, so that's everything in this little pouch. Let's move on to, well, I guess I can talk about this other pouch right here. You guys can see it on the other side. It's just a little pouch. These are all sold by Everly Stock, by the way, so they're all in the same camo. Um, this pouch, I just fill with snacks, full of protein bars, uh, little Snickers, candy bars, and stuff like that, uh, cookies, anything I want. Just stuff it in there. Anything that sounds good, that's high calories, put it in there so it's, uh, and, you know, easy to reach and I can grab it anytime that I'm hiking. So that's those. Now let's pack up the rest of the pack. All right, let's get into the meat of it. Um, so as I mentioned, when I, when I set up this pack, uh, I wanted to have it compartmentalized for a very good reason. And now you're going to understand what that is. Um, so as I showed you, you can take these bat wings and you can fold them in, zip them to each other, and basically run it as a day pack. Um, this center part here can come right out, so you just use those things. Uh, you can also use the center part by itself, but basically the way that I wanted this to work is I wanted this 
um, center compartment to be my camp so that if I wanted to make camp and just day pack from there like if you wanted to set up a spike camp it was easy to do that so what I did everything that goes in this pack is basically stuff that I can leave at camp that, that makes up my camp um, now I mentioned before that I had this climate uh, sleeping bag I'm gonna show you real quick this was a cheap sleeping bag this was 50 bucks or 60 bucks or something on sale normally it's like a hundred dollars weighs four and a half pounds it is uh, it is chunky now they do make a smaller version of it I got the bigger one because I was feeling extra but the reason that I decided to replace this with a pack uh, that's significantly more expensive is because of what you're looking at right now if I use this it takes up a lot of space in this center pack. I can sort of compress it down and I think I was able to like turn it sideways and get it in there. I don't even know if, if I was able to do that, but you can tell it uses up like the majority of the space. There is some space up here. I can add some other stuff, um, but basically the problem I was running into is when I put everything in there that I wanted to carry, I really didn't have like enough space to put a lot of food. Like I could squeeze in about three days worth of food when I had this sleeping bag in there. Now most of the time that's probably all you're gonna need. In fact I don't think we ever really stayed in the woods longer than three days. Uh, but it's nice to be able to put five days or even more in there uh, in case you get on the elk and you, you got a really long hike in and you want to stay out for a long time. So for the sake of space I replaced this one and that's how it ended up being my base camp sleeping bag and I was just pretty happy about it because it was really comfortable and it was nice having a separate pack. So this right here, as you can tell, I don't know how much you guys can tell, but this is significantly smaller um, and incredibly light. This one's four and a half pounds. This sleeping bag, because it's down, it's true goose down, um, which is hydrophobic in itself, so it repels water. Um, the outer layer is incredibly thin. This, I don't know, feels like it's probably 100D. This stuff is like 30 denier uh, nylon with a silicone lining on it, so it is waterproof. Um, it weighs one pound, 12 ounces. Four and a half, one pound, 12 ounces. Huge difference. Now, the only thing is this sleeping bag is about $600. Um, and I really struggled to spend the money. I did manage to find uh, a discount coupon. I think I got like 20% off on it during uh, like Black Friday or something like that. But I'll tell you what, it is hella expensive, but it is worth every penny. Like I can't believe I'm saying it, but so this, this sleeping bag right here is made by Big Agnes. Um, and it's uh, a 20 degree bag. Um, I went with the 20 degree bag because I wanted a little more versatility um, because they also sell a bag liner. They call it the McKinley bag liner, I think is what it's called. You can put that inside of here and it basically adds another 10 to 15 degrees. So that would bring this bag down to about a five degree bag. I really don't think I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of camping in my life that's gonna be colder than that. So. I felt pretty comfortable getting the 20 um, and I'll probably get that liner at some point uh, if I'm going to do some colder weather stuff. But anyway, it comes in this, uh, there's two sacks that it comes with. It has a storage sack, which kind of looks like a laundry bag. It's like a mesh bag. Um, and that is, I guess when you store it, you don't want to have it fully compressed. Um, but when you're packing it in and out of the woods, you use the compression sack. That's this tiny little thing. Um, and as you can see, it's super small. So um, really happy with this particular uh, purchase. And this was one of the more expensive items that I bought. And I will definitely say that if you are going to cut corners anywhere, don't do it on your sleeping bag. Um, it's just one of the bulkiest items you're going to carry. And it's the best way to shed weight is getting a good sleeping bag. So I would say if you're, if you're just getting started um, and you have some money to spend, spend a good amount on a sleeping bag. If you're really balling on a budget, you can get away with this sleeping bag, the climate. Um, but if you're gonna do it, you might wanna consider getting the Vapor 5000 center pack, 
uh, instead of the 2500 because you'll have just a little bit more space or you can just go with the 2500 like I did and you'll just have a little bit less space so you'll be looking at potentially spending like three maybe four days in the woods uh, with the amount of food you'll be able to carry uh, but that said this pack is incredibly warm it's gonna do the trick just fine it's just really heavy big Agnes thing is badass I was so excited about it and it was really comfortable surprisingly it's more a lot more narrow than this one I'm a pretty big guy but I was really comfortable sleeping in it so I definitely recommend them I'm a big fan now of big Agnes and in fact uh, when I get to talking about my shelter system um, I'm gonna explain to you uh, there is a tent that they make that I would really like to get uh, but it's also very expensive um, but we'll get to that in a little bit so sleeping bag and then for my uh, for my sleeping pad um, I used a climate um, this is the climate insulated static V recon um, I don't I don't remember the price on this but I know it wasn't expensive I want to say it was like between 40 and 60 dollars um, it's a really thick pad it's probably about yay thick I don't know it's like what three inches thick um, it weighs 24 ounces and um, one of the really nice things about this it, because I'm a pretty heavy guy and I like to sleep on my side a lot when you sleep on your side you have less surface area that's in contact with the pad which means that there's more weight uh, or like more pressure in the points where you're making contact and so the nice thing is because this thing was quite thick and because I was able to blow it up pretty like hard like it was it was a pretty solid mattress it was able to support my weight and keep me from touching the ground when I was sleeping on my side so that was really important you know I've mentioned many times already for me the creature comfort if I'm gonna carry some extra weight it's gonna be for my sleeping system because sleep is everything out there it's how you get your energy to be able to make it through the next day so um, but another great thing about this particular one is that it is um, uh, it has an R factor that's really high an R factor is like I guess a measure of insulation how well it keeps you warm from the ground you would not think that the ground is as cold as it is uh, but if you had to sleep without one of these, which John and uh, Mike found out the hard way last year because they had a bear come through and maul their stuff, and uh, one of them or both of them lost their pad, they had to sleep on the ground, and they said it was freezing. And you'll find out when you're sleeping in, in your bed, you like lay your hand outside of your, your sleeping bag and it's not on your pad, the ground gets super cold. So this thing was awesome, super insulating. It's relatively wide. It's probably not the lightest option, but I was really happy with it. Um, and like I said, it was like, I wanna say it was under $60 as far as I know. Um, that's that. And then finally, a pillow. This is something you can cut corners on for sure. I found this on Amazon. I wanna say it was like $10. It's made by Rugged Camp and it's just like, a little blow up pillow uh, one thing I did find out about these is don't blow it up completely like blow it up all the way and then little let a little bit of air out it's gonna be a lot more comfortable when it, it has a little bit of give in it like that so tuck that in there um, and that is my sleep system so let's get into the shelter system so when it comes to bivy hunting, as we like to call it, uh, the reason we call it bivy hunting is because generally speaking, people will use what's called a bivy sack or a bivy tent. It's basically like a bag, like a waterproof tent material bag that goes over your sleeping bag um, and you sleep inside that. It's about as small as you can get when it comes to a shelter, but they're kind of claustrophobic. Um, and one of the issues they have is that uh, when you sweat, when your body releases moisture, it gets trapped inside of it a lot, so you get a lot of condensation. Um, I'm a pretty sweaty guy. I, I release a lot of moisture just all the time, and so I didn't really like the idea of sleeping in a bivy. Uh, now, what a lot of people will do with a bivy is um, they'll leave it open, 
and instead of just sleeping only under a bivy, a lot of people prefer to use a tarp over the bivy so you can set it up with your trekking poles, which are over here, um, so that that keeps like you know moisture, rain, and stuff off of you. So you have a tarp over your bivy, um, and that's a really really solid option. Um, if you're gonna get a bivy, a good one, uh, like for instance uh, the Outdoor Research Ascent Shell, I think is what it's called, is I want to say it's like 300 bucks or something, and they're pretty expensive. They're not cheap. They weigh very little. It's like 1.3 pounds. I want to say it was like 18 ounces or something like that for the Ascent Shell. That's what Mike and John were using. Um, they're really sweet, but I, I kind of went a different direction with it. Um, I went with a one-person tent. So the tent that I went with is this guy right here. Now this is the River Country Products Trekker One. Um, the reason it's called a Trekker Tent is because this tent uses a trekking pole to set it up. And I'll show you a picture of what this tent looks like set up. Um, but basically, it's incredibly easy to set up. You just put five stakes in, you lift up the center with your trekker pole, um, you've got a little tiny vestibule you can put your pack in, um, and you can set up all your stuff and sleep in there. And this thing was great. I loved it. It was really comfortable. Um, I'm able to sit up. If it's cold out, you can like sit up and cook your breakfast in, you know, in the vestibule before you get up. So that was a major bonus. Um, I will say when it rained um, pretty heavily for a long period of time, uh, I did start getting a little bit of water in the tent. Um, it wasn't a lot, like I, I stayed dry all night, uh, but there was a little bit of water that pooled up in some of my stuff. Um, you know, like it, it wasn't a big deal, but it, it got a little bit wet. I think part of the reason for that is this is an incredibly cheap tent. This thing, it's like, I want to say I paid 55 or 60 bucks for it. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, super cheap. Um, the material is a little heavier duty, um, and I don't think it's siliconized. It doesn't have that um, that layering, uh, that like waterproof layering on it that some of the, the better like siliconized nylons have. And I think that's part of the reason that it started kind of leaking after it got really saturated with rain. But it's not a huge deal. Um, there's two things you can do about it. I think if you set up this tent, and sprayed it down with one of those like waterproof siliconizing sprays, that would probably take care of the problem. Or you can also use a lightweight tarp. Uh, when you know that you're gonna be dealing with rain, bring a lightweight tarp with you and set that up over it. Um, that way you have two layers and I guarantee you if you did that, you would be more than comfortable uh, in this tent. Another thing that's important to mention, uh, whether you're using a bivy or a tent, whatever you're using, doesn't matter. Get yourself some of this. This right here is a roll of, um, it's just plastic. They use it, you can get it at Home Depot. Uh, it's really cheap, it's super lightweight. Um, people use it for like masking off their floors when they're painting. Um, we used it as a ground tarp and uh, it, you know, it does the trick of keeping the bottom of your tent uh, from having like moisture come up from the ground. Um, so, and it's super lightweight. So uh, I really like that. It fits right into this pack. And the way that I load this into my pack is just simply uh, in between the butt bucket here, you can unclip the butt bucket, but I actually found I can just slip this right through there and it sits perfectly underneath the vapor pack and once I have stuff in these uh, these wings, the bat wings, it creates a bit of a barrier on either side, so it doesn't move. It just stays right there on the load shelf. Uh, really easy way to carry my my uh, my tent. Um, I will say that I tried to go cheaply into getting a tarp. This is the tarp that I got on Amazon by Uni Gear. It said it was ultra light. It is not ultralight. This thing weighs like two pounds. So it stayed at base camp forever. I'm not going to carry that thing up the mountain, um, but I'm sure it would have kept me dry during that rainy night, but it wasn't worth it to carry the extra two pounds. Now there are some other companies that make really lightweight tarps. Um, 
RAB makes really lightweight tarps and I'm probably gonna buy one of their tarps. It's called the Sil Tarp. It's a 30 denier siliconized uh, super lightweight tarp. They make a one, two, and a three, like a one person, two person, and a three person. I think the two person is gonna make an awesome uh, shelter um, to cover a tent and it's gonna be badass. So I think I'm gonna buy that for next year. It only weighs like 14 ounces or something. So totally worth uh, a little extra weight if you, especially if you know there's gonna be rain coming. One thing I, I will say about the tent situation, um, like, like I said, I really liked this tent. It was cheap, 50, 60 bucks. Would I use it again? Absolutely, if, if I was trying to do things on a budget, this is a freaking awesome option. Uh, to use this tent um, and frankly if you're not using a tarp this thing weighs about the same as a bivy plus a tarp uh, it weighs two and a half pounds total uh, the whole setup um, and you get you know you get a vestibule and stuff so um, it's basically what you if you had a sill tarp 2 the RAB sill tarp 2 and one of those um, outdoor research ascent shells you'd be at about the same weight as this um, so for 50 60 bucks it's a great option so if you're balling on a budget think about that guy um, but that said now that i have most of the gear uh, my goal is to sort of slowly start replacing some of that gear and uh, one of the things i would like to replace this tent with is that sweet tent i was telling you about that big agnes made it's called the scout 2 it's actually a two-person um, trekking pole tent it uses two trekking poles one on each side uh, it doesn't have a vestibule, but you have enough space for two people to sleep in there. So I'd probably use it by myself. And um, it only weighs one pound for a two-person tent. It's super duper lightweight. Um, so I want to get that, and then I want to get a tarp to go with it. So that if there is going to be rain, we have two-walled um, setup, and it's, it, I guarantee that setup is going to be awesome. Just having a one-pound tent, you can use 90% of the time, and then when you know when when you think it's gonna rain throw up the tarp over the top of it it's just gonna be epic but that tent is like four hundred dollars so uh, it's gonna be a tough pill to swallow I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing it I might just keep using this and put some of that waterproofing spray on it to uh, to help with the waterproofing issue that I had um, anyway so that's the sleep system um, let's jump into the next chapter